So the Holy Communion is the bread and grape juice or wine that we have when we remember the work that Christ did on the cross. It's a time of reflection. It's a time to uh, confess our sins, to judge ourselves, to search our heart and be open and honest before God and confess and repent and turn away from our sins. And so this is something that uh, a long time ago I was challenged to take communion every day for 30 days. And I would literally keep grape juice and bread and when I'd get up in the morning I'd go in the kitchen and for 30 days straight I took communion. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful chance to reflect on what God has done for us. So I want you to consider taking communion with me today. Now I know your church may have taught you uh, uh, that you only do it a certain way from a priest at your church, or you can only do it on the first Sunday of the month or whatever. But the Bible says that we should do it as often as we do it. We should remember Christ. And so uh, I believe it's something wonderful we can do. So I want to read the scripture about uh, the Holy Communion and share it with you and then take communion with you. Uh, and so the scripture I'm going to read is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24. So this is Paul writing. He says, um, for what I received from the Lord, I also delivered to you that when Christ Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And you can see I got a little wafer here. He took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so I'm just going to take a, a moment and uh, I'm going to open up this, they call it a fellowship cup. You can get these, by the way, uh, online. So this fellowship cup, not easy to open apparently. Maybe I should have prepped this before I started shooting video. Hmm. Not having too much luck with this here. Definitely should have prepped this before I started shooting. Let's get another one here. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to take this bread right here and open it up. This is called a fellowship cup. You can get them online. Maybe your church uses these. And I'm going to take this wafer here, and I'm going to remember the body of Christ, how Christ was slain on the cross for you and I, uh, and how he gave up his body for us. I'm going to take a moment to confess my sins, and I encourage you to do the same. So let's do this in remembrance of him. This is his body broken for you. Thank you, Jesus. Reading on in this scripture, in verse 25, it says, In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So this is a little bit of grape juice here. And this is a symbol of the blood of Christ. And so I'm going to take a moment to just pray and thank Christ for his blood. Hmm. Forgive me for my sins. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. And it's by your blood that we have forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Jesus. So we'll drink the, the grape juice here. Oh. Mm. Hallelujah. And read the rest of the description, the scripture here, verse uh, 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, as often. So there's no requirement from the Bible that it can only be done on the first Sunday of the month or what have you. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall, in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. 
For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you sleep. But if we judged ourselves rightly, then we will not be judged. For when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord in order that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat or drink, wait for one another. If anyone's hungry, let him eat at home, so you may not come together for judgment. So this scripture is uh, its really beautiful. I want to break down a couple things in here. Whoever eats or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy man, he shall be guilty. What does that mean? It means that we have to confess our sins. We have to consider the great gravity of the death of Christ as we eat and drink uh, in remembrance of him. We, we have to make sure that the Lord um, has, has been given a chance to fully examine our heart and deal with us on the areas that he's bothered by. Um, if, if we, for this reason, it says, if we don't judge ourselves rightly, for this reason, many of you are weak and sick and a number sleep. Uh, and so literally the Bible is, is suggesting that there are people who have died uh, and um, who are even sick for improperly eating or drinking um, the, the communion. And so that's a very important thing to say. Um, and we have to, we have to judge ourselves rightly. You know, when we take communion, it's a common union. We're, we're coming together with other Christians to remember the body and blood of Christ. So this is my challenge to you. Consider taking communion uh, with your spouse or by yourself every day for 30 days. And then comment what the result was in your life. So I'm James Disciple Johnson, founder of Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Stop by DiscipleChristianMC.com and learn about our ministry. Learn about what we're attempting to accomplish around the world. And buy a t-shirt. Support the ministry. God bless you. Thanks for watching.